Welcome back to the Quarkcast podcast, and today we got some interesting and spicy Tekken esport news. But today, before we start, we want to thank Core Gaming for sponsoring the video and letting us do what we love to do every week. And let's get into it. So we have a bit of a spicy news today that one of a Tekken player, his name is Thigo Uppercut, was banned from the Tekken World Tour, the Masters event specifically due to region yeah. issues so under Tekken uh, at, under Tekken World Tour they are China is not one they of have, the countries al- eligible to it they have like a list of like all the countries and regions that are available and it, and it, basically the rules are if your country is not on the list you are uneligible to compete yeah but I don't know if this is a problem with the player that got banned or just the Tekken World Tour but everyone's saying how fucked up it is because he flew all the way to the event and then when he registered they told him he couldn't play so so my thing is, is I it, don't know who's did, like who's at fault because I'm pretty sure that, like the, the rules for the Tekken World Tour are posted when you sign up for the um the circuit yeah you know. I I mean, has he? This is my thing. I don't know if he has competed in before any tournaments or any of the Tekken World Tours beforehand. So that's my thing. Is like, wouldn't he want to read the rules beforehand and understand that? Hey, maybe I can't be playing in this before anything. And even though, like, if he's competed in the other to- uh, tournament, like circuits for the t- uh, Tekken World Tour, did no one ever say, "Oh, yo, by the way, your country is not allowed to play in the is play in the Masters event"? Nobody decided to tell him or decided to look it up. So I think it's kind of both faults, but it's both Tekken and his fault because I feel like how can you compete in all these circuits and still not know, oh shit, my country might not be able to compete yeah. in a big event. Yeah, like if this is, like right now, like the regular season is over. Like the, mm-hmm. like registrations are only for like LCQs and like stuff leading up to the TWT finals. So like if he's qualifying for this stuff, then like... He must have played before, right? Like, yeah. There's no way he hasn't if he's like playing now. Exactly, and it's kind of like an interesting news because like, yeah, it sucks. But why? I, I like there was no reason. I think because even Harada, he even tweeted out. He just said, "Hey, we're sorry for this. We'll make sure next check in World Tour will add more countries." But why is China not allowed? I'm I'm so confused on what's wrong with that. Because I feel like in yeah, every other I, esport. Like, uh, all esports China is playing in, but for some reason Tekken World Tour they're not allowed to be played. I I don't get it. Especially like they're, they're not even being held in China. I get it. Maybe there's some legal issues in China, but they're all being held in the states. So I I or like or states or other countries. So like I don't get what's yeah, yeah. the con- the controversy it's, behind it's it. It's done like internationally. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. Like what? Like I don't know. I feel like China. Like, yeah, they're able to play in, like, every other major esport. I don't know why uh, Tekken is uh, being weird about it. I think maybe someone should have told him, or maybe one of the... If he competed in international stuff, he, he like, somebody should have told him, like, hey, just letting you know, if you're Chinese, or if you're from China, you're kind of not allowed to play in the main event. But no, I think nobody just told him. And I felt like, I think he was competing, and he just, nobody told him, which is kind of insane. And then, like, figuring out... It's like, it's like imagine you playing, like, Counter Strike. The every event like IEM, uh, IEM, Katowice, um, Blast uh, Final, and then the majors. Like, hey, uh, Valve actually said that your country is not allowed to play in the major. It's like, yeah, yeah. I competed with my team for two, like two hundred out of the three sixty five days a year, and I'm not gonna be allowed to compete. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the equivalent of what happened. So it's kind of yeah. insane, and I, I hope. Even under- I don't understand the point of putting like region restrictions on anyways like it's an international thing it's like what does yeah. Monday Namco have some like beef with China or some shit like, that, that's the only thing I can think of it's gotta be Bandai Namco because there's no other uh, I don't because Harada even said like he was he was annoyed that like this happened because I it doesn't even feel like Harada wanted this it definitely had to be do something with Bandai Namco and uh, again if, with all these companies it's always gotta be the, hi- the higher ups always make the final decision and then everyone else just supposed to follow through so I guess for that it's it, 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 that's what happens unfortunately, but um I don't know 
Yeah, we'll see, unfortunately. But uh, we have other news. We have other games that came out. So I have been playing Spark Dragon Ball Sparking Zero nonstop for the past three days. And because I got the Deluxe Edition. So if you guys don't know, uh, people who got the Deluxe Edition, they get to play the game three days early compared to people who get the Standard Edition. So my thought of the game so far, it's great. The story is great. The what-if stories are great. Only issues is online is ass. They have a lot of server issues where out of the three days, I was only able to play one online game because I, would, this is not, I was only playing a lot one ranked game because of a t- t- uh, connection error. And I don't know what's going on and I don't know why it does that. I don't know because Bandai Namco does have a history of doing that. Back. Um, I, I haven't played the game. I'm not buying the game. It's not my thing. Fair. But like, I... I think it's very funny that like when you the game came out and you and our friend were playing the story mode, it didn't sound like any of you guys were having fun. <laughs> you like, know, I, I'm sitting here and I'm like, you guys paid like how much was it? Like ninety bu- bucks. Ninety bucks. Ninety dollars for the deluxe edition. Yeah. And I ha- they're sitting here with their controllers like this fucking guy is so bullshit and i hate him why could he do that and i'm like you guys just paid 90 dollars to play a game two days early and it seems like it's causing you nothing nah it's one boss fight that pisses me off it's one boss fight that got the entire community pissed off it was so if anybody don't know it's great ape vegeta he so the thing is with this boss fight okay he turns into this great ape he's big right and then you're still a little guy you're still human form or say in form, you're still a normal guy. The thing is, normal punches don't work on him. Either you charge up an attack, and then you like charge up like a like a big hit, and then he flies away, or you just beam him and just throw key blasts at him. So the issue is with that is that he can charge at you like a normal person, like full speed, and then he can grab you, and then when he grabs you, he takes half your health, and then he just. The issue with him, he gets back his key, his uh, his energy so fast that he just spams you with a uh, with bla- uh, with key blasts. So the only way to beat him is to charge up, play distance, and then key blast him, and just play just keep playing distance. Because if he gets close to you, he's gonna grab you, and then your half your health is gone. So that was the boss fight that pissed me the fuck off the most out of everyone. I don't know. Then I hear like when our friend plays online, he's like. No way, this guy does that. That's total bullshit and stuff. I, like, I have... Like, everyone, can, oh. while they're playing the game, makes it sound like it's the worst fucking game that's ever come out. And then everyone's like, oh, but the game's so good. Yeah, I'm it like, is. That's it it sounds like everybody fucking hates it while they're playing. No, 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 no. We actually love the game. It's just there's... the, no, the boss. Heard, oh, that's so cool. I, no, I, I have said that. There's oh, a, that's so bullshit. Oh, this fucking sucks. No, there's a lot of good things. Everyone's on Twitter like Dragon Ball game of the year, honestly. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, I haven't heard anyone playing it sounding like they like the game while they play. Like, it sounds like Valorant. Like, no, no one seems like they like the game, but everyone like can't stop playing it. Okay, okay. Here's my thing, right? When Elden Ring first came out, and some of the bosses were just like. Of no, like I'm not like no one knew how to beat them. People were pissed, right? But they were angry, and they were like, they were like, bro, this is bullshit, or this this boss is bullshit, or this is bullshit. But then everyone would be online. Elden Ring's kind of game of the year, actually. That's literally what the same exact thing. Like the thing is, I really with, don't think so because the difficulty I think so. in Elden Ring isn't artificial, like it is. Like no, no, the, turn the CP- difficulty up and down. What like what is they? What do they do differently? Do they play differently, or do they just do, like, more damage on higher difficulty? No, they just, they're just, uh, so, for example, if you, the ba- the standard difficulty is already hard enough. It's, like, hard, the standard difficulty is hard mode. And then you have the option to lower the difficulty. But the thing is, everyone's like, but no. what changes? What changes in... So in they're able to predict your moves, they're able to block your moves, they're able to, okay, like, so counter your moves. difficulty. If they can predict your moves, that's called input reading, and that's fucking fake. No, 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 no. So, more like, if you keep doing... Uh, if you uh, if I just come up to you and start punching you, then be like, alright, I'm just gonna block you or counter you if you just keep doing that. So it's not... It's like you're playing an actual player. Like a seasoned pro, basically, but as a pro. Like, they don't do additional damage. They don't have any, like, booster stats. They just able to fight smarter. That's all it is. 
their AI is so art, it's smart. That's what, that's the whole thing about the game. It's like their standard difficulty is kind of already hard. And then I, so for me, I played the whole Goku storyline. So I beat the whole Goku storyline and Great Ape Vegeta is not as hard as compared to some of the later bosses. Cause some of these later bosses, they are difficult. And they are like, when you go, when you fight Beerus and when you fight Jiren. So the thing is uh, with the storyline, right? There is what ifs. So there's the main path of the story that everyone knows, but there's what if stories where that you can branch off to that the, the game made. The thing is with that is the main storyline, the only objective is, hey, survive for two minutes. Okay. That's how you continue with the storyline for some of the, some of these boss fights. But to get the what ifs, you have to beat these guys in under two minutes. So it's a, so if you can't beat them and you can't get the what if stories. And then the thing is with that, what they made it even harder. If you lower the difficulty, you can't get the what ifs. So you have to be, you actually have to get good at the game for you to get the other stories, which is, that's my thing because I've, I've done some of the what if stories and low key, they have been sick as fuck. Some of the what if stories, but you have to like actually learn how to play the game. But I mean, again, overall, the only issue I had is the online connection. Like, I am not the only one. I've had people who little DM me who's like, yo, um, do you, have you had issues also? I'm like, yeah, I've had issues where I get online before the match even starts. Like, oh, you could party with someone. I got in connection error and then the game ends. I've got out of the three days, I got one game to play. I managed to play one online game. And I'm not the only one. Company, by the way. Yeah, it's like, come on, it's bullshit. And I hope today they come out with like a patch notes to release, it, like to fix it and shit. But it's been really annoying. Mm -hmm. But overall, I've been enjoying Sparking Zero. It is a good game. Game of the year? I don't think so. There has been other games that have been much, much better. I feel like deserve game of the year, like Black Myth Wukong, Silent Hill 2 that we're about to talk about. Uh, I mean, other games that are, have been really, really good. But I don't think it's going to win game of the year. But it is a very, very good game. So now we get to talk about your the game you've been playing. Silent Hill 2 remake came out. Yeah. On Sunday, because I uh, got the deluxe. Amazing. I played it. I was very scared. I wish I recorded it, but Ennis heard me scream <laughs> the other day. I've never heard I've you scream told, that one, did I? Yeah, I have. Ne I've been told that out of all the times I've screamed in a horror game i've never screamed that way which probably says something about uh the scariness of the game yeah but the game is really good i really like it um if you've played the original i think i think if you've played the original and you tell yourself that the original is better you you're probably just coping um because in this one they read it all the voice acting so it doesn't sound like two like two AI put in the same room next to each other, like talking to each other, you know? Yeah. So that's really good. The combat is difficult, but it feels fair. Um, the story is of course the, uh, the best part of the game. And there's like, they added more endings, I believe to it. Um, yeah. So me, I'm dog shit at the game and I was constantly at one one hp through the majority of my playthrough and apparently one of the endings has criteria that you have to be at low health for an extended period of time yeah so i got punished for get it by getting the bad ending because i'm dog shit at the game so, so the now whole... i have to replay it so the whole point of the game like you're basically like how you explained it is you're trying to find your wife right and then you yeah. go into this other world but like I was watching you play and I was like, oh, like you get to have a gun. And then you said, oh, even if you have a gun, you're still going to be like, doesn't even matter. Like even with guns or anything. So when you could, when it came well, to the I, combat, was it like that difficult to the point where you were always on low? Like, can you just go in and just start swinging or you actually have to be smart with the like gameplay? It's got, I, I'm not going to say it's like Dark Souls because it's not, but it's basically like every enemy has a sort of like attack time. Mm. and like it's like swing swing and then you dodge swing swing and then you dodge and each enemy has like a different one but sometimes they vary it and some enemies just take fucking forever to kill yeah but even though you have guns 
ammo is very very limited okay like, like your pistol will take like eight shots to kill something but like at most if you're like not really using ammo you might have 50 shots total so it's like if you use your pistol like that's like let si like six enemies you could kill with it oh know? wow so like you kind of have to do the melee combat through the majority of the game i ca i pretty much only save the weapons for like if i was really like about to fucking die but yeah the game is hard i would recommend story is amazing what about uh the Very boss fights spooky. how are the boss fights boss fights they're all kind of like the same Loki. really it's just like run away and shoot just with like different attack timings but nothing's like actually that crazy nothing stood out to you like in any, none of the bosses were like wow this boss fight is amazing no i like the game isn't really like engineered to be that way they're mm. more just like cinematic set pieces there than anything you know but like all the bosses are just like you kind of like you, you play like call of duty zombies how you kind of just like gather things in around and then you shoot them when yeah they're all fucking like suck it, you, you just kind of play like that oh okay. honestly the boss fights they're not like they're not like the peak of the game most of the most of the boss fights even like are more there for like thematic moments and stuff like representation of something yeah 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 like the, the whole game's like a psychological horror and every monster is like a manifestation of like the guy's subconscious so whenever he's like fighting something it's usually him like getting over some sort of like emotion that he's been feeling like it goes uh... through like, the stages of grief and stuff so like they're more meant as like story pieces than actual like gameplay things but like mm -hmm. the regular gameplay aside from the boss fights is like peak yeah so. so i mean i know you said the horror aspect of it but was it is it more like is the horror aspect a lot a lot of just jump scares or is there like actual like feeling like it drags out it's, the feel? Uh, like there are jump scares every once in a while but it's like the game to scare you relies more on like um eerie feeling and stuff like that or just like kind of putting things there that look scary that are meant to like kind of like linger in the back of your mind and it's just got like a lot of disturbing imagery mm. and stuff. But so it's more just like a subtle like like the audio I, i'm getting like how's uh, i mean you're the audio guy so like how's oh, it like the audio is like actually peak if you right? like, play with headphones play with headphones it's like so good you can tell exactly where everything is There's, yeah like, if there's like bugs crawling around like you hear them fucking crawling up the walls and does it feel like it's like right like... next to you or like it's gonna climb oh, up yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know what um audio engine they use for the game but like it's really precise it, it's definitely an experience if if people are vaguely interested in it i would maybe like 60 i got the deluxe edition because i'm i've been a silent hill fan for a minute but um if you're like on the fence like wait for a sale and definitely pick it up it's like the original game took like maybe seven or eight hours to beat uh my playthrough my first playthrough took me of the remake took me like 13 hours so like, okay so there's a lot of content to it like it's yeah, worth yeah. it but you want people to wait for it not like get it right away i i would say like I think sixty dollars is a little steep. Even though the game is meant to be replayed on subsequent, like nothing is like your first playthrough. You know. Like, oh, each one is different. Because it, because it, well, well, what I'm saying is like the experience on your first playthrough is nothing like new ones. Because then you know what's coming. It's a horror game. It's not uh, like Elden Ring where okay, you, yeah, where you can like. Get, you beat the game and then go i want to beat it again but with like a different build and suddenly the game's totally different it's not like that it's like you play the same thing but you can just try to like do different criteria to get a different ending but yeah um, and then each one because you'll it, know which one is like different so for example you'll know like oh this, this is about a jump scare in three two one and then something comes out yeah, so you'll already yeah. know they, about they it. don't like switch up the timings on the jump scare it's like all that stuff is definitely specifically crafted so that your first playthrough is fucking terrifying but mm -hmm. that that, that kind of just goes for like any horror game so i'd say if you're on the fence about it like um wait for a sale yeah i got you i i would honestly rate it like probably at eight and a half to nine out of ten like it was that was like peak horror game so would you so. consider it's like one of the 
best horror games you've ever played? I think so. I think I was the most scared out of every horror game I've ever played. Yeah, played and game. it's not all just some scares. Like, there's actual other aspects to making it f- feel scary. Yeah, and it's also a puzzle game on top of that, so usually some shit's chasing you while you're trying to do a puzzle. So like, uh, <laughs> so you're yeah, uh, so you're forced to like multitask. It's stressful too. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> stressful. But I'd recommend. There is um honestly, probably the best, the best horror game I've ever played. That's good to hear. That's high praise. Uh, there is one more esports news. It's Counter Strike. So, <laughs> you're gonna like uh, this. Is uh, gonna be a very funny one. Um, so recently they come out with a new batch of skins and there's new, uh, XP ways to get like specific markets on like skins and markets, right? Yeah. There was an exploit where people would just go into deathmatch. So it would be, people would go into dust two, everyone would run down mid and then just start throwing nades and, fl- uh, incendiaries at each other. And then they would just end the game quickly so they can get XP. So... Valve decided to step in, and he gave... Was this when people were getting the stars? At, like, the end? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? You have to get, like, to a certain level to get the star. And, like, before you continue, sorry to cut you off. No, no, you're good. Isn't it that, like, the only way to get this star would be, like, to play, like, every day for, like, multiple hours? Like, in a year? I think so. mate someone calculated it and it's like you have to play like three or four like games like rank games a day for like a year to get like enough xp well this is like yeah well people but the thing is people find an exploit where people go into deathmatch and then you do that so valve decided yeah. to step in and they gave every single person that abused that a one year trade ban. so they banned them for a year to trade any skins so it's not only that they gave it to YouTubers also and creators that were known for skins and all that. So there's this one uh, streamer or YouTuber named uh, Sparkles. His goal was he wanted to do a Dragon Lore trade up to number one float, right? So his thing is, oh, I'm going to do extraordinary trade ups, open boxes, and all that, right? Now he has a one year ban and he can't do that. So not only does this affect him, but it affects his content also now. Because he can't do trade ups anymore, and he can't buy skins, he can't trade skins anymore. He, yeah. th- they gave everyone, and now everyone's freaking out. It's like, bro, what? And then everyone's trying to freak out and give it to, uh, try to uh, message Valve. Yo, can you unban me? I have this skin, this skin, this skin. And some of these people that got banned, they have like thousands, tens of thousands of dollars worth of skins, like rare skins, and now they're a year trade ban. So. I keep fucking seeing tweets like I get trade ban for playing deathmatch, but then this guy's been spin botting for the past year and he's still not banned. It's like, what are the priorities? Yeah, it's kind of insane. Like, Valve, when it comes to cheaters, they didn't do anything. Valve, when it comes to exploiting to get skins, now they step in and get involved. Like I guess they, that shit costs more money. They really do hate but. Counter Strike. I've never seen a company hate their own product. It is it is wild to me. Like they have priorities, and I know they already know, they're already uh, working on Deadlock. I get that, but my God, they really hate Counter Strike. They're in the really community. picking the wrong fights, man. Man, like, it, it is it doesn't make any sense. It is. Ins- I saw that, and I was like, wow, they really do hate the community. Like, I've never seen a company hate their community so hard as Counter-Strike hates, uh, Valve hates Counter-Strike. It is kind of insane. But that was, like, a little interesting news that I saw. And it's kind of funny because now, um, I guess, like, they just really don't care. Because they already fixed, like, for me, uh, I already said this before, but they already fixed t- uh, Team Fortress 2. Like, the game is fixed. Like, they removed all the bots, they fixed the game, and now the, the game is thriving with, like, 60, 70k players every day. So yeah. it's not, it's so funny how they if they want to Valve could fix it but they just choose not yeah, to. Yeah, if they really want to they could just do everything but yeah, they just fucking hate their community. Valve is that like one lazy person where when that lazy person actually tries to do something, they can get it done, but then they just choose to be lazy. So mm-hmm. love Valve, but my god, <laughs> they are fucking over the CS community. And uh yeah, that's all uh the news for today. I think that's uh, interesting news. We have a lot of it. Make sure to, if you guys get Dra- uh, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, make sure to play. It's really, really good. And Silent Hill. It's very, both games have been praised. I think all the reviews have been either 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 for both games. It's kind of insane. Yeah. So, like, 
gaming is a W right now. So if you are, uh, and um, yeah, I think everything has been good. Thank you for watching. Make sure to check out coregaming.com slash shop for any merch, any merchandise you guys want to get. We still have a few stuff. We have still have jerseys, shirts, shorts, and socks and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. See ya. See you. Bye-bye.